Hey, what's going on people? Hope you guys are doing good. Today we're going to be talking about the Galaxy S22 Ultra cameras and going over several tips and tricks to help you get the most out of this wonderful camera system. But before we do that, if you missed my previous videos, make sure to give them a watch. I covered the S Pen, a few things that you should do as soon as you get your phone, and a full camera walkthrough. Also, if you plan on picking up an S22, S22 Plus, or S22 Ultra, please use my affiliate links. I do get a small portion back and it helps support the channel. That being said, let's take a stroll through when Winter Park and talk about these cameras. So the first tip or trick I have for you is a document scan. It works with scene detection or scene optimizer, and it's great for something like this. So I'm at a train station, and say I want to scan the arrival and departure times of the train. I can pull up my camera. You'll see the document scan feature pop up in the bottom right corner. Just take the picture, and that's that. And now here's one without the scan documents optimizer turned on. And you can see there's a small difference in terms of distortion the scan document optimizer really uh, dials down on any distortion that might be in the image allowing you to punch in and really look at the text and it's really useful like i said for something like this at a train station or maybe an airport if for some reason you're not seeing the scan document symbol in the bottom right hand corner go into your settings by tapping on the cog wheel in the top left corner and then make sure scene optimizer is turned on if it's turned off you won't see that little symbol so just go in and turn it on. It is on by default, but if for some reason it got turned off, just turn it back on and then you'll get document scan. Also, if you tap on scene optimizer, you can toggle on and off document scan on its own. So you can still leave on scene optimizer and then turn off scan documents by itself. The Galaxy S22 Ultra has a really good macro mode. It's called focus enhancer. What you're gonna do is get really close to your subject and it will automatically kick in and then you can take the shot. You can get really close and everything is nice and sharp. If you don't want to use Focus Enhancer, you can toggle it on and off by tapping the little icon in the bottom left-hand corner. And if you turn it off, it allows you to get really close to your subject to blur it out and then keep your background in focus. It just gives you a little bit more of a field of view change. So if you want the macro shot, make sure to keep it on, get really close and then take the shot. And then it will also use the scene optimizer to really increase the sharpness to give you a really nice macro photo. Here's a few examples of macro shots that you can get with the S22 Ultra using Focus Enhancer. So the Galaxy S22 Ultra has a few different ways that you can take a photo. If you go into your settings and then scroll down until you see shooting methods, you can use your voice to take a picture or you can show your palm. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle on voice commands and give you a quick example of how this works. So I'm gonna to switch to the front facing camera. It does work on the rear facing camera as well. Now I'm gonna set the phone down like so. And then I'm gonna back away. Now if I hold up my palm, it will take a photo. And if I say cheese, cheese, it's not taking a photo. There it goes, took it a minute because I'm so far away from the, from the phone. Now if I switch to video, and I say record video, it should start recording. Again, because I'm so far from the phone, there it goes, it started recording. Took it a minute to think about it, but that's a quick breakdown of how you can use different methods to either take a photo or you can start recording a video. Granted, you can just use the S Pen as well, which is probably a little bit easier, but this is still a lot of fun. So one of the best ways to use the S Pen is with the camera. I've talked about it a few times in my past videos, but I just wanna reiterate it. I have my phone on a tripod, and this is a great way for me to get in frame and take a self picture of myself. So I can just hit the S Pen button and it will snap the photo. It's a great way to be in the shot if you have friends or loved ones that you wanna get a picture with, or if you just wanna take some self-portraits. Obviously, I don't have any company for this photo, so I can also use the S Pen to draw in someone. That way I'm not so lonely. I have nobody for my own. Another way you can use the S Pen to take a photo is if you're doing like a long exposure shot or maybe a picture of the moon since this does have the moon shot capability and you want to make sure your camera stays as still as possible for that long exposure, you can put it on a tripod or prop it up like this 
and then trigger the shutter using the S pin. That way it takes out any handshake and gives you the sharpest, most still photo possible. Night mode has also been improved on the S22 Ultra when compared to the S21 Ultra. You get a one second exposure improvement, meaning that it's less time that you have to hold the phone steady, giving you a sharper photo. Here's a couple examples between the S21 Ultra versus the S22 Ultra. Let me know which one you think looks best. Personally, I really do appreciate that one second improvement, but I think the optimization needs to be fine tuned a little bit more. Another improvement with the S22 Ultra is the 108 megapixels. We now have Detail Enhancer, and this is gonna come in clutch if like say you get in a car accident and someone tries to drive away, you could take out your phone and take a picture of their license plate with Detail Enhancer turned on so you can really crop in and get the license plate information. Let me give you an example with this street sign right here. Let's say that pole hurt me. Oh, and it was making a run for it. I needed to get its information. I can switch to the 108 megapixel mode by tapping on three by four then selecting 108 megapixels. And then on the bottom right corner, you have a little icon. Turning it on and making sure that it's yellow means that detail enhancer is turned on. Now if I take a shot and then toggle it off and take the same shot, you can see there's a difference. It's very small, but there is a difference and the detail enhancer shot preserves a little bit more detail and this could be a big difference or make it or break it when it comes to getting the proper information for the authorities. There's a lot of other things that you can do with Detail Enhancer, but this is just a practical scenario. Also, it does need to be fine tuned, so hopefully a future update can make it even better. Another improvement with the 108 megapixel mode is it now supports night mode. So as long as you're using the 108 megapixel shot and it's low light, you'll see a little moon pop up in the bottom right corner. That means night mode's enabled, and you can take a night shot, which is basically a long exposure with a lot of processing and optimization. It works pretty good. Again, it still needs to be fine tuned, but I was able to achieve some pretty awesome results. If you want to get the most out of these cameras, you're going to want to use pro mode because with pro mode, you can capture raw photos. I talked about it in previous videos, so make sure to check out the card up top. But one new change with the S22 Ultra is now telephoto cameras support pro mode. Let me show you. If we dive into the camera app, go under more and then go under pro mode, you can see right off the bat, we have options for our telephoto and our super telephoto. This is awesome. We can manually dial in our focus and this does support focus peaking, which is fantastic. We also have options for ISO, shutter speed, EV comp, and of course our white balance. And if you wanna shoot in RAW, all you have to do is go into your settings, go under picture formats and toggle on RAW copies. And yes, RAW is supported on the telephoto cameras and this is amazing for pro shooters that want to squeeze a little bit more information out of their Galaxy S22 Ultra camera. But remember, if you want to check out more pro mode tips and tricks, click the card up above. Single take is a great option to capture multiple photos, apply different filters and video clips with different effects all at once. And all you have to do is just hold the phone still. So it's a great way to capture different memories. To get the single take, go under more and select single take. In the top right corner, you can go under the settings and you can toggle off the shots that you don't want single take to capture. So if you don't want any crop shots, portraits, collages, so on and so forth, you can just toggle these off by tapping on them. Once you have everything set up, just tap okay. And then you can take your single take photo. As you see the timer tick down, it gives you the option to add on five more seconds. So you can get a total of 20 seconds now with single take and that's really, really cool. If you don't need single take to capture the full 20 seconds, you could stop it at any moment. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run its course. So it's almost done. We have one second left and it is finished. So now you can pull it up in your gallery and once it's done processing everything, you can swipe up and view everything. So it took six different things. We have the original video, we have a fast forward clip, we have a filtered photo, another photo, and then the one with the crown is the best photo according to the AI. It's basically saying that that's the one that you should share and it did the best job. So I had to take a quick break and uh, get some coffee. Put a little pep in my step, but I figured this is a great time to talk to you about Expert Raw. We just got done talking about Pro Mode and you can think of Expert Raw as like Pro Mode on steroids because it unlocks 16-bit Raw. I've talked about it previously and I even did a dedicated video on it, so make sure to click the card at the top to watch it. But let me show you how to download it and give you a quick rundown of what it is. If you want to download Expert Raw, you're going to go into the Galaxy Store and then do a quick search for Expert Raw. So do a quick search and you can see it pop up right there. Download it 
And then when you open it up, it'll look really familiar. It looks just like Pro Mode, as you can see, and we have access to our telephoto cameras just like in the new Pro Mode. But more importantly, it does do 16-bit RAW. So here's a quick example between the regular RAW from standard Pro Mode and then the 16-bit RAW, as well as a JPEG versus 16-bit RAW. It's, um, it's really cool that we have this functionality. Unfortunately, you can't edit 16-bit RAW in the native editor. You do need to use an app like Snapseed, which is free. Just go into the Play Store, do a quick search for Snapseed, and you'll see it pop up. Then download that app. And when you open it up, you can edit raw images right inside of this. You don't need Lightroom or any other app that you have to pay for, just use Snapseed. The Galaxy S22 Ultra has a really cool AR area inside of the camera app. It's not new, but a lot of people forget that it's there. And there's some really cool stuff in there that I highly suggest that you dive into and play with. Let me show you. If you wanna access the AR area of the camera app, you're gonna go under more. And then at the top, you're gonna to see AR zone, just tap on that. And then here you can do really cool things like go into the AR Emoji Studio and create your own AR Emoji. You can take a picture as your AR Emoji. So if I pull that up, you can see you have different things like the custom AR Emoji that you can create. You have other ones like a T-Rex. And when you open the mouth or open your mouth on some of them, it does like a really cool thing. So like I said, they're not new, but they are fun to play around with. Definitely entertaining for kids. You have AR emoji stickers that you can do. If you go under more stickers, you have different things that you can apply. You also have AR doodle, so you can actually draw something and it will literally track in real time. So if I draw a quick little thing on my face, you can see it's tracking my face. Again, fun to play with. You also have deco pick which gives you different masks and stuff that you can attach to yourself, like that one, or one of my favorites is the ramen one. I mean, I'm not sure how practical it is, but again, it's just fun to play with and tinker around with, but there's also quick measure, which is really useful. So for quick measure, let me give you an example. Let's say that I work in construction or if I'm doing some interior decorating and I need to get the measurements of a piece of furniture, like this bench, for example. I can go into quick measure. I can calibrate the camera by moving it around. Then I'll just simply mark a point on one side of the bench, like right here. Walk over and then mark my second point at the end of the bench, right here. And then in the center, it will give me the measurements, which it's saying it's about 71 inches. And I have to say, looking at the bench, that's pretty accurate. It's not gonna be like spot on, but if you need something just in a pinch, it'll definitely do the job. So you can also measure someone's height. What you're gonna do is tap the person in the top right corner and then mark a spot by their feet. And then as you go up, it will automatically detect their head height and then give you the height of the person. The last thing I wanna to talk to you about on the photo side of things is the built-in photo editor. It's really powerful and it has a lot of great tools. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to add a portrait blur to a photo that was not taken in portrait mode. To do this, I'm gonna flip over to the front facing camera and just take a photo. Now, if I pull up that photo, you can see it's not in portrait mode. If I tap on the three little dots in the bottom right corner and then tap add portrait effect, you can see it has added the blur effect and I can increase the blur or decrease it to add a little bit more realism to it. And that's a cool way to add that bokeh effect to non-portrait mode photos. Another really useful feature inside of the editor is the remaster picture option and it works really good with macro shots. So I have a macro shot right here. If I tap on the three little dots and then tap on remaster picture, it's going to enhance the detail and sharpness and clarity of the image without messing up the colors. And it does this using AI. So this is before and that's after. Look at the color in my eye and look how much clarity there is and sharpness. It looks really, really good. So object eraser isn't new, but removing reflections and shadows is new, and it's all found within the same menu. So let me show you how to do it. I have a terrible photo right here with a horrible shadow. If I tap on the pencil icon to pull up the editor, then tap on the three little dots in the bottom right corner, go into object eraser, and then tap on erase shadows, 
Watch this. Boom. It removed this shadow line across my face. It works so good. It is hit or miss, but when it hits, it works beautifully. Next up, we have the reflection eraser. So if I pull up a photo, like I have one right here of a koi pond and it has a lot of reflections in it, tap on the pencil icon, go into the three little dot menu, go into object eraser, and then tap on erase reflections. You can see it will cut back quite a few of the reflections. Think of it like a digital polarizer and it works really good. I mean, it, once again, just like the shadow eraser, it is hit or miss, but when it does a good job, it does a good job. I can't wait to see what Samsung does with this in the future. The Galaxy S22 Ultra can take amazing raw pictures using expert raw, but it can also capture raw cinema DNG video. Let me show you how to do it. So if you want to shoot 10-bit raw cinema DNG video on your phone, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you're going to want to download an app called Motion Cam. To do that, go into the Play Store, do a quick search for Motion Cam, just type in Motion Cam, and you'll see it pop up. It's called Motion Camera right here. Download that. It's a free app. And then now you can shoot raw video. It's like 4.3K if you use the full width of the sensor, which happens to be the same exact resolution that you get from the A7S III if you shoot ProRes RAW. It's absolutely amazing, but the file sizes are massive. Let me give you an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and start recording, and you can see we're already at one gigabyte, and it's only been four seconds. So shooting like a 15 or 20 second clip is gonna be three to four gigabytes, and that is humongous. And this is at 24 frames per second. So we're approaching 20 seconds and it's already pretty much four gigabytes. Like I said, the file sizes are massive, but the quality is outstanding. Let me give you an example of what you can expect from Cinema Raw video on the S22 Ultra. One really cool feature that I've talked about in previous videos is using the S Pen with the auto frame feature. So once you're inside of the camera app and you're under video, you'll see like a little circle with a box and then a smaller circle inside the box. Just toggle that on and now auto framing is turned on. If I step in front of the camera, it will automatically track me. So if I move around, you can see the camera itself is following me around. I can trigger the recording just like so. If I take a step back and then move in, it uses the wide angle to crop in on the sensor. The quality isn't the best since it is 1080p and it's cropping in on the wide angle sensor, which is a smaller size sensor, but nonetheless, it's great for social media videos. If you wanna get a little bit better quality tracking, you can pick yourself up something like this. This is the PowerVision S1. It's a compact gimbal, I absolutely love it, but one of the great features about it is if you're using the app, I can stand over here and then hold up a palm and it's going to start tracking me in 4K. And then if I take my index finger and my thumb and just point it up, it'll start recording. So now it's recording a video, it's tracking me, everything is nice and smooth. The quality is a little bit better since it's in 4K. And then I can stop tracking and stop recording by index finger and thumb and then palm and everything has stopped. I really like this gimbal. It's compact, it's great. It features a built-in tripod and it has a built-in wireless charger so it acts as a battery bank as well as a gimbal. And the whole thing folds up nice, sleek, and can fit right into your pocket. I'll throw a link in the description if you feel like checking it out. It's around 230 bucks, but in my opinion, it's one of the best gimbals on the market for smartphones. One really cool upgrade with the Galaxy S22 Ultra is improved portrait video. The feature itself isn't new, but the processing has gotten a lot better and it works really well and it has buttery smooth focus pulls like you would get with cinematic video on the iPhone. It's really neat. Let me show you. Just in case you're new to Samsung phones and you don't know how to access portrait video, you're going to go into your camera app, tap on more, and then you'll see portrait video right here. So that's just a quick refresher or like I said, if you're new to it, that's how you access it and you can use the one times or three times telephoto in order to capture 
portrait video, which is pretty cool. This is an example of what portrait video looks like. You can see it's cutting me out pretty well. And if I hold up my palm to cover my face, it should focus on my palm and then it goes right back to my face. So it has really smooth focus pulls, which is kind of crazy considering cinematic video was like, you know, talked about so much for having these focus pulls and you can do it right here with your S22 Ultra. I like it. If you ever find yourself in a position where you need a super stable video, like you're chasing your kids around or maybe you're on a roller coaster, you can enable super steady video. All you have to do is tap the hand at the top that has two squiggly lines around it and then now Super Steady is turned on. This gives you extremely smooth video. It only works in 1080p, but you can go up to 1080p 60 to slow it down for some slow motion. And you can also switch from the standard to the ultra wide camera. So you have a couple different options. Here's an example of what you can expect when you use Super Steady video. Here's an example of Super Steady video. So whenever you're in Winter Park, you have to try Kilwin's ice cream. They also have one in Celebration. It's like famous ice cream, super sweet and creamy. I got Moose Tracks, we're gonna give it a try. And I'm gonna use Director's View to capture my reaction. So I got Director's View pulled up. I'm gonna go ahead and start recording. So it's recording, you know, with the rear facing camera and the front facing camera. I'm gonna take this bite right here. Look at this, chocolate, peanut butter, vanilla ice cream. It's going in. Mm. I can feel my blood sugar just going up. That was really good. We're gonna do one more bite. One more bite. Here we go. Mm. So yeah, if you guys try Kilwins, make sure you get the Moose Tracks. You'll like it if you like chocolate, peanut butter, and some creamy ice cream. Mm. So if you wanna use director's view for like exploring an area and getting your reaction or eating something and getting a reaction like I just did, go into your camera, go under more, tap on director's view, and from here, you could capture your front-facing camera video as well as your rear-facing camera, and you could switch from the standard to the three times zoom to the 10 times zoom, which is really, really nice. You can also record the video as it's on screen, so it can record the front-facing and the rear-facing at the same time and then put a little window in for the front-facing, or you can have it record two different streams separately. You can rearrange it, so you could do with a little window like, like you see here, or you could do uh, split view, or you can do full window, as you see right here. And you can swipe that down to broaden your field of view or broaden your viewfinder. And then just tap record whenever you're ready. And you could switch cameras right here. So it's a great way to record reaction type things and I really like it. It does record in 1080p only, but honestly, I don't think it's a big deal, especially if you're just capturing a quick memory or trying to get a reaction to share on social media. It does a good job and I'm happy with it. The Galaxy S22 Ultra can record 8K video. And while that's really nice and great for cropping in on video, it could also be used for extracting stills if you don't want a blurry image. Let me show you how to extract a photo out of 8K video. It's really useful and it's a great way to eliminate some of that shutter lag problem that plagues Galaxy phones. So I have an 8K video pulled up right here. If I tap on the three little dots in the bottom right corner and go under details, you can see the resolution is 7680 by 4320, thus being 8K. I can play the video. I can also scrub through it and find a frame that I want. So let's say I want that frame right there. I can scrub, stop on the frame that I want, and then in the bottom left-hand corner, there's like a circle with a box and a play button. I can just tap on that and it will extract that still. So now when I go to that image, tap on the three little dots in the bottom right, go to details. I now have a 33 megapixel photo saved that has plenty of detail. And guess what? It's not blurry and it was able to capture a moving subject which that car was obviously driving. So it's really useful for eliminating that shutter lag all with 8K video. This is why I think 8K video on smartphones is actually pretty useful. Speaking of extracting images from 8K video, it reminds me that the Galaxy S22 Ultra has a fantastic video editor that can be used for editing a single clip or piecing together multiple clips. Let me show you. To access the built-in video editor, we're gonna go into our gallery and then we're gonna pull up a video. So I have one right uh, here that I can pull up. Then I'm gonna tap on the pencil icon and down here, I can cut the video, I can crop it and reframe it. 
I have different filters to apply. I also have all of my exposure and color tools like brightness, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, saturation, so on and so forth. But if I wanna create a movie and stitch together multiple clips, I can tap on the three little dots in the bottom right corner, tap on create movie, and now I can select multiple clips and then tap done. And it will give me a timeline down here with multiple clips that I can stitch together or add transitions by tapping on the little minus sign in between clips. I can add a cross dissolve, a fade, slide, wipe, and much, much more. I can also add text, I can add music, I can change the output aspect ratio, and there's a lot of other stuff that I can do including retime and things like that. It's a really powerful video editor that you get for free built right onto your Galaxy S22 Ultra. If you wanna get even more out of the camera when it comes to video, make sure to use Pro Video Mode. It has a lot of different options. Let me show you a few of my favorites and why you should use it. To access Pro Video Mode, tap on More and then tap on Pro Video. Now the number one reason why I like to use Pro Video is it gives you multiple aspect ratios, including the cinematic aspect ratio of 21 by nine, but since I'm in portrait, it says nine by 21. You also get more frame rates and resolution options. So you can shoot 4K all the way up to 60 frames per second. You can shoot 8K 24 frames per second. You can also shoot 1080p at 120 frames per second, which is gonna give you that slow motion look, but you do have to slow it down yourself, but it will give you a much better bit rate, giving you better quality video. More importantly, you now can use the three times telephoto and the super 10 times telephoto in order to capture manual video. You also have all of your controls down here along the bottom, including mic control, so you can hook up an external mic, including a USB mic or a Bluetooth mic. This is gonna give you a ton of more uh, control over your camera to be able to capture the video that you wanna capture. You can also do focus pulls by manually controlling the focus here, and you do get focus peaking. It's really powerful and one of my favorite modes when it comes to this camera because I shoot so much video on my phone. Low light video on smartphones has always been mediocre. I mean, the iPhone has pretty good low light video, but in terms of Android phones, low light video tends to suffer. Samsung introduced auto frames per second with the S22 Ultra, and it actually makes a difference. Let me show you how to turn it on and some examples. If you wanna use auto frames per second, go into video, then go into your settings, and then make sure auto frames per second is toggled on. What that's going to do is it's going to automatically adjust your frame rate depending on low light conditions, and it does make a difference. Here's a clip with auto frames per second turned on versus turned off. Let me know what you think. So there you go. That was several camera tips and tricks for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Let me know if you found them useful, and if you have anything to add to this video, comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of Winter Park, as well as all these tips and tricks. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Remember, if you want to purchase the Galaxy S22 to use my affiliate links, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.